Hi guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make music videos from scratch. I'll try to keep it as fast, short, and informative as possible. Here's the pipeline. So go to Pinterest and look for images you like. The great thing about Pinterest is that when you click on an image, it shows you similar options. After 10 to 20 rounds, you'll find exactly what feels right for your music. For example, I click on this weird image and it shows me more like it. Let's click on this strawberry girl and see what comes up. And as you can see, we get a lot more similar fruit and person mixes. Once that's done, you can collect the mood board in Figma or any other software to review it and decide if you want to move forward with those images to create a video. A good idea is to make two to three different mood boards and then either choose one or blend them together. Go to the Mid Journey website and you'll find a very underrated feature called Explore. There you can discover exactly what you need by entering a prompt and seeing what others have already generated. Just like Pinterest, you can browse similar results, copy prompts, and reuse them. I prefer Pinterest images because they better match what I'm looking for. Download the image and we will use it in Mid Journey as a style reference. Click the Create button and ensure the settings match mine to confirm you're using the latest version. Set the aspect ratio to 16 to 9 for full HD videos, as I do. Then, click the image icon and upload the Pinterest image. The image is currently set as an animation frame, but we don't need it. Click to delete the image. Click on the style references and add the image. Do the same for image prompts. Once you've done that, a simple prompt like woman will generate a similar image, and sometimes even a better one. In that case, you can wash out the copyrighted content. You can also generate the prompt by clicking the info icon. But after comparing them, I personally prefer to just use the simple woman prompt. To maintain consistent characters, we'll use the Omni reference feature with my face. After you clicked on it, upload your face. Ensure the image is high quality with a neutral expression as much as possible, unlike mine. Now, we'll use the Pinterest image to transform the character into a new style. Click on Style References and upload the image. Do the same with image prompts to transfer the pose and expression. A simple prompt like Man will suffice since we've used reference images. For the Omni Reference feature, we'll use the default character weight of 100, but you may need to experiment with it if the results are consistently poor. Click Generate a few times. Now let's check if we got good results. If not, as mentioned, we'll experiment with the Omni Strength. Clicking Use copies the prompt for reuse. When adjusting the Omni Strength for new generations, MidJourney sometimes retains old values, so ensure you manually update it. After a few generations, I've chosen a favorite output and will proceed with it next. When you experiment next with full body shots or different angles, you may face some problems with inconsistency. In that case, I recommend another workflow using ChatGPT. As you can see here, I type to make the younger version of the woman, and the result is high quality, with the patterns and overall quality preserved very well. Now I made a prompt for a full body shot and added keep original structure, which means to keep everything the same as much as possible. You can see the result is amazing. Compared to Mid Journey, which loses all consistency, it preserved the colors, patterns, haircut, etc. But the face is still a little bit off. Download the image and go to the remaker.ai website. We'll swap the face there. Upload the chat GPT image first, then your face image, and click Swap to combine them. Let's check the result, and you'll see the face consistency is much better. Using the same method, you can also choose different poses, change locations, and more. As you can see here, I used the first image, found a forest scene on Pinterest, and made a prompt to combine them. After that, I wrote another prompt to fill him with more water, and then used face swap again to make my original face consistent. I'm sure there's a better face swapper out there that doesn't blur the face too much. If you know one, let us know in the comments. But since I'm only using it for full body shots, the blurriness isn't noticeable. But if you still want to increase the quality, there's a good feature on Magnific AI that can help. Just upload the image and choose Precision. I recommend trying around 74, 25, 20 for the settings. 
adding some grain also helps to hide the artificial look, which is great in our case since we want as much realism as possible. So now we'll move on to image editing since very often we need to extend the background or add new elements. I prefer using Photoshop for this. Simply select the area you want to extend and generate. As you can see, Photoshop gave us an amazing result. I also recommend downloading the latest beta version of Photoshop since it includes a new harmonized feature that makes it easier to blend added elements. For example, let's add an animal to the scene, import it into Photoshop and click remove background. After a moment, Photoshop will clean everything up so we can place the animal and scale it to fit our needs. Then we can apply the new harmonize feature. After processing, you'll get three harmonized options. I prefer version number three. Once you're happy with the result, export it. You can do similar things in Midjourney, but I prefer Photoshop because Midjourney still gives unexpected results when extending areas. While I give a quick intro to the video section, I'll play some of my clips. This part is theoretical. I promise to be brief. I also want to say the video part is the easiest one. The real work is the idea, concept, and preparation. The more time you spend on images and the scenario, the better the video will turn out. There's no magic in video prompts. I use the simplest one word prompts. Yes, there are hacks like JSON prompts or image guide prompts you've probably seen lately, but simple prompts are enough for me to generate videos. So again, script is the key. Now let's create something from a single image we generated today. Let's go to the VO3 website, click the link, and then click Create with Flow. If the website isn't working, you can use a VPN. There are plenty of tutorials available, so you'll be able to figure out how to get access. Click New Project, and you'll see the default text to video option, which is good, but we need frames to video. Select it. Now let's add our image, click the plus icon, then Upload, and choose the image we created earlier. After that, click Crop and Save. I usually work with Veo too, since it has an amazing feature that blends two images and it's much cheaper and faster than Veo 3 Let's type a simple prompt like camera zoom out and some movement for the animal. We'll try both Veo 2 and Veo 3 and compare. While we're waiting, I want to show you another approach I use when I have trouble guiding my generations. Click the image generation icon and select Context Pro. After uploading the image, we can set the aspect ratio and type a prompt, like make a side view. After some time, you'll get the result, which can then be used as a frame in Google VO2's frame to frame feature. As you can see, we now have a consistent side view of the image. Let's try another prompt, like extreme close up. We can also use that as a frame for VO2 to create a camera zoom in effect. Another option is an aerial view. This way, you can direct your shots and control the camera angles more precisely. Now let's upload our extreme close-up and use the frame-to-frame -frame feature to direct the camera motion. Choose VO too fast and select another image. Make sure the extreme close-up is set as the second image. Then type the prompt zoom in. Great. Our previous videos are already generated, so let's check them. Click the play button on the first video, and as we can see, the result is amazing. Now let's check the second video made with VO3. The result is nice, but I personally prefer the first one because it followed the prompt more accurately. However, you can see that the camera zoom out was missed, and that's one of the common issues with VO. That's exactly why we can fix it using the frame to frame feature. Now our video is ready, and as you can see, we've got an amazing zoom in effect. For example, if we use Hiluo, it follows the prompt much more accurately. On top of that, it delivers output in full HD quality. Let's check the result. We now have an amazing zoom in, achieved without needing any additional last frame image. I also created an extra prompt where our animal comes very close to the camera. These additional scenes will be perfect for the final edit. In comparison, Veo can only upscale to 720p, which makes the quality difference very noticeable. Sometimes the upscaled 10 80p from Veo actually looks worse than the native 720p, so it is what it is for now. But I still like using Veo because it creates insanely good transitions between frames, something that other tools can't quite do yet. 
Let's check one of my recent videos where I use these transitions. This style is very pleasing to the eye and really hooks the viewer because you never know what to expect. The more unexpected the transition, the more engagement it creates. And the best part, it usually takes just one simple prompt, morphing, and that's it. So for now, my workflow is use VO2 for those insane frame-to-frame -frame transitions. Use Hiluo for everything else when generating high-quality content. Let me show you my prompts so you can see that it really works with just one. Let's check them one by one. As you'll notice, it doesn't always work perfectly the first time, but usually, after the first generation, the morph comes out really well. Also, one very important thing to keep in mind, there has to be at least some shape similarity between the images for VO to understand how to morph them properly. If you're trying to transition between two completely random images that are very different from each other, it becomes much harder to achieve a smooth transition. It's still possible, but usually only if you're willing to spend a lot of credits regenerating until the model gets it right. To make sure morphing works well from the very first attempt, it helps to choose images that share at least one common visual element. It could be the overall silhouette, the main subject, or even just the composition. Even though the details are very different, Veo can easily recognize that both images represent the same figure. As a result, the system connects those visual cues and produces a great transition. This is the key to getting consistent morphing results. Find or design some similarity between frames so Veo has an anchor to work with. That way, you'll spend fewer credits, save time, and get smoother transitions right from the start. Great! So once you've generated all the content and you need to lip sync your video, you can use Runway Act 2. Just go to the website and select Act 2. Upload your lip sync recording. You'll need to record yourself first. Upload the image or video you want to apply the lip sync to. Here's how I did it. I recorded my own lip sync and this is the original video. And here's the result after applying the lip sync. You can see how well it works. That's almost it. Just a couple of finishing touches. If you want to upscale your videos, use Astra from Topaz. It delivers excellent results. For editing, I work in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm making this tutorial there as well. And that wraps up the tutorial. This is the pipeline I use all the time. But remember, the most important thing is creativity. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.